are these people? This was a story, I believe, in the past on to me. Uh, mm. This would have been on how we missed that, but I said I wanted to do that. Or I might have sent this. In. I forget. But um, but as you guys know, I'm a teacher in my regular life. And now I am a union rep for my school. So that's now my other thing, in addition oh. to the million other things I do without getting paid to do it. Um <laughs> Um, I think this story is a little interesting in terms of we've talked we talked a lot about Israel slash Gaza and education before. Um, we haven't really talked about how if teach well, like to varying degrees of teachers here and there trying to be allies to Palestine and having their jobs be at risk or yeah. their students being at risk due to their solidarity. But, um, but I wanted to pull this story because I thought it was kind of interesting. I think it also kind of gives, as I said earlier, some insight as to why college students are protesting at their colleges and universities, at least in the spring and hopefully within the next week or so now that they're coming back on the campus. Yeah. So it kind of gives like a uh, curl and behind the veil moment as to some of the things that are really sneaky and honestly in reading the article a lot it should be illegal but this is just another example once again how union leadership does not reflect the views and the opinions of the rank and file like mm. you know, you've said that many times and it is apparent here so case in point as you will read from this story this is another truth out story uh written by Marianne Dane, I guess that's how you say your name, uh, where U.S. teachers pushed their union to divest from Israel. What happened? And that divestment pushed back by Palestinian educators came under debate at the American Federation of Teachers Convention. We've talked about the AFT before. They will mention it here, but essentially that's the national union uh, for teachers um, in this country. So Marianne continues. As the American Federation of Teachers Convention kicked off in Houston, Texas this week. Oh, by the way, this article was written in over a month ago, by the way. The worsening humanitarian situation in Gaza was top of mind for many in attendance. We're going to show up at the convention and do everything we can to organize people around doing something about the genocide. Ted Cooper, executive vice president of AFT Oregon, told Trufel as he was preparing to travel to Houston last week. Like Cooper, delegates from union locals nationwide are leading education organizing efforts at the convention and calling for AFT, their locals, and their petition funds to divest from State of Israel bonds and companies implicated in Israel's assault on Gaza and its decades-long occupation of Palestine. In doing so, they come up against some of the against some of the union's leadership, who have instead put forth a resolution of their own, we'll get to that later, one that calls for a two-state solution uh -huh. and argues that rather than turn away and divest from Israel, now is the moment to rededicate ourselves. The AFT is the nation's largest, second largest team of labor union, representing 1.72 million members, including K-12 educators, higher education faculty, staff, and healthcare professionals at more than 3,000 local affiliates. For the past several years, the union has held State of Israel bonds in its investment portfolio. Why? Who knows? Um, valued I can at tell a you high... why. Huh? That's, that's from the other way around. That's hush money, pretty much. Probably. You know? Yeah. Valued at a high of $300,000 from to 2016. It last right. purchased a State of Israel bond in 2017. On its most recent available financial statements, the union held a single State of Israel bond valuing at $150,000. That bond matured in September 2023, and AFT told Tufel it has not purchased new its State of Israel bonds since. Its largest local, the United Federation of Teachers, UTF, uh, UFT, sorry, has held a large pair of the has held 
I said a large pair. As how the pair of the bonds combined worth a combined one hundred sixty-five thousand dollars for over two decades. Nationwide, union locals and pension funds for union affiliated educators, and public service employees hold tens of millions in State of Israel bonds, and in the stock of companies whose products and services enable Israel to continue its occupation and its genocide in Gaza. So, basically. A union is holding bonds for Israel, right? Um, in addition to stock related to what they're doing over there. So, <laughs> right. which I'm kind of like, why is a teachers' union have any bonds at all? Um, I, I wonder if they've got any Ukrainian ones too. We've talked about probably Weingarten going over there, right? So, um. The Development Corporation for Israel sells State of Israel bonds to raise foreign capital for the Israeli Treasury. Bondholders maintain no oversight of how funds are spent once invested, and the funds are not earmarked or publicly disclosed. Of course not. As money in the government treasury, the funds are under the control of far-right Minister of Finance Biazel Shmolerich, who openly advocates for the utter destruction of Gaza and was recently recorded outlining a plan to de facto annex the occupied West Bank. Members of the AFT have expressed horror in response to what they see as the union's financial support for Israel's ongoing assault on Gaza, which has leveled schools, universities, and healthcare facilities across the Strip. Around 80% of schools in Gaza now require major rehab, rehab, ah, rehabilitation or total reconstruction, according to a preliminary school damage assessment released by the Occupy Palestinian Territory Education Cluster, an entity led by UNICEF and Save the Children. More than 600,000 Palestinian children are being deprived of their right to education as attacks on the enclave continue, according to the assessment. Every university in the besieged strip has been destroyed in Israeli attacks. The vast majority of Gaza's healthcare infrastructure has been damaged or destroyed, leaving no fun fully functioning hospital to serve the population. Well, and as of yesterday, I think they they bombed another school. Probably, yeah. So... I can't even keep up anymore, to be honest with you. Yeah. What's going on over there? Um, we, view, we view this very much as the beginning of a campaign and the kind of first step in the political education that needs to happen within AFT on this issue of Israel-Palestine. These harrowing data points are cited in one of two proposed resolutions calling for the AFT to redeem its holdings in State of Israel bonds and cease purchasing new bonds. Additionally, the Berkeley Federation of Teachers, BETF, proposed a divestment resolution with a scope, which, if passed, would direct AFT to call on teachers' pension fund managers to divest from companies that facilitate and enable human rights violations military occupations, apartheid, or genocide. The AFT's International Relations Committee reviewed the resolutions at the convention on July 22nd. All three divestment-related resolutions were quashed in committee. Sources familiar with the proceedings who spoke to Trufelt on the condition of anonymity characterized the committee meeting as biased towards pro-Israel voices and conducted in a way that limited debate. The resolutions targeting AFT State of Israel bonds are the result of efforts of the coalition of members who began organizing as AFT for Palestine last December. We are hearing from our colleagues from Education in Palestine telling us how horrific it is. The conditions of life make their work impossible, said Sharina Ravek, former president of the Graduate Labor Organization at Brown and a coalition member. There are educators in Palestine who are asking us as educators, as their peers, to be in solidarity with them and intervene in the mechanisms that are enabling that genocide, and divestment is the answer. After collaborating on the resolution's text, organizers at four local passed parallel resolutions and submitted them for consideration at the National Convention. Support staff united at the University of Vermont Medical Center, where 20-year-old Palestinian-American Hisham Arant Aranti was treated after he was shot with a possible hate crime in Burlington in November 2023, was among the lo union local 
that submitted a resolution. The submissions were reviewed at the convention as a single consolidated proposed resolution. AFT Oregon also proposed a slimmed down version of the resolution. Mm. BFT's proposed resolution took a different route, one that executive board member Andrea Prichette said was meant to allow for individualized investment strategies to be pursued in jurisdictions nationwide, depending on the political climate and anti-boycott divestment sanctions BDS legislation. There are now more than 35 states with anti-BDS laws on the books. Our proposal, if it's passed, will empower locals in their state to try and organize around whatever type of pension system they have or whatever kind of retirement system they have and try and work within the landscape of their state, Prichette told Truthout ahead of the convention. I'm sorry, I thought this was America. I thought, I thought we were allowed to like do some free speech and, and boycott some stuff. I thought that was what, you know, we have a whole holiday about a guy who got people to boycott shit. No. No, you know, right. yeah. I mean, yeah. allegedly, every every year, every politician's like, well, Martin Luther King, great guy. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> apparently, y'all don't think that fucking boycotting so nice anyway. Right. Um, Let's go. The resolution sought to end pension fund investments in companies such as Denver, Colorado-based Palantir Palantir, Technologies, yeah. Which, which Palantir. we've talked about, uh, mm-hmm. which supplies AI-powered targeting capabilities to Israel's military and intelligence agency. When the proposal was put to a vote of BTF membership earlier this year, Christian said it garnered overwhelming support. The members mm-hmm. are crystal clear that they do not want to retire off the profits earned from the genocide of Palestinians. You want to find out about Palantir, go to Unlimited Hangout and go read some Whitney Webb for a couple of hours. You know, she'll let you know. Right. Um... Following the announcement of proposed resolutions ahead of this week's convention, the General Union of Palestinian Teachers published an open letter on its Facebook page on July 10th thanking the AFT locals for bringing the free divestment-related resolutions and other resolutions calling for resuscitation of Israeli attacks on Palestinians and the termination of U.S. military aid to Israel. Only by isolating apartheid Israel's genocidal regime as apartheid South Africa was isolated, we will, as Palestinians, be able to enjoy our full rights, the letter reads. Unions have an important and urgent role to play in that. The Right to Education campaign at Brissette University published a similar statement on July 22nd. As educators, as K-12 teachers, as healthcare workers, as professors, we need to be at the forefront of this fight for justice in Palestine. Uh, while the AFT International... Yeah, I didn't read that. Oh, sorry. When the AFT International Relations Committee on July 22nd, The proposed divestment-related resolutions faced a well-organized opposition. Of course it did. Delegates on the AFT's so-called Progressive Caucus spoke in favor of Proposition 30 for the union to release a statement calling for lasting peace, security, and self-determination for Israel and Palestine. The statement backs a two-state solution and asserts that Israel's cause of war, self-defense, is just. That resolution passed out of committee and will now go to the floor before the convention wraps. Which I'm sure the they'll state of, take. Yeah. Uh, the state of Israel bond-related resolutions have not debated. The committee chair, longtime UTF member P- Peter Goodman, uh-huh. ruled the resolution could violate the union's constitution by infringing on the executive council's oversight of union assets. BFT's proposed divestment-related resolution was not discussed for procedural reasons, because it was deemed to cover issues similar to those of Resolution 30, despite its significant substantiative differences. English is hard. English Mm. is hard. Uh, (laughs) Leadership figures in UFT and AFT and members of the Progressive Caucus have long been criticized for strengthening the union's ties with Israel. Former UTF and now AFT President Randy Weingarten has had a personal record of aligning with liberal Zionist groups, including serving on the board at J Street, a pro-Israel uh, policy organization. And we've talked enough about J Street to know uh-huh. 
Y'all better, better, better learn today. Um, mm -hmm. She is also a leading voice within the Jewish labor, which has long opposed BDS. I wonder why. On July 16th, Weingarten took to social media site X Twitter. to back resolution 13, 30. So, um, so this was a resolution. Not going to read all of it. I'll read yep. enough of it. Um, but the resol this is resolution 30. So it calls for a bilateral ceasefire in Gaza and promoting a two-state solution and an end to the weaponization of hate. Um, the war in Gaza must end and the policy that creates two states for two peoples must start. Far too many Palestinians and Israelis perished and far too many Palestinians and Israelis have had their lives shattered and destroyed. As educators, healthcare professionals, and public service professionals, we are sick at heart over the toil this war has taken on thousands of innocent people, particularly innocent children. We have long recognized the right of Israel to protect its citizens against crimes of war and aggravation, and aggression. Sorry. The horrific slaughter of Israeli civilians perpetuated by Hamas, Islamic Jihad, and others on October 7th was the largest last murder of Jews since the whole. No, it wasn't. Uh -huh. To this day, Israeli civilians taken as hostages on October 7th are still in captivity in Gaza. The ongoing war in Gaza, its terrible toll, tens of thousands, a billion Palestinian deaths, and its widespread destruction has created a humanitarian tragedy. Further shedding of blood in Gaza and the infliction of more pain and anguish will not bring peace and security to either Palestinians or Israelis. Cycles of violence and Retribution in Israel and the Palestinian territories for the better part of a century cannot be broken with more pain. Moreover, there is real danger of the expansion of the current war in Gaza and other nations in the Middle East and beyond. For all these reasons and more, the Fed American Federation of Teachers supports a negotiated bilateral ceasefire agreed by, to, by both sides in this war and guaranteed by the international community. A ceasefire agreement must include humanitarian aid for the immediate provision for desperately needed food, water, medical care, clothing, and emergency shelter to Palestinians. And that's all I'm going to read. That's all I cut it. Um, release of all hostages taken on October 7th. Don't need to read the rest because we know this is basically fluff. Yeah. Uh, Both sides so, of nonsense. Right. Yeah. So... Ha. Uh, anyway, organizers with AFT for Palestine also faced off week when Daniel Siegel, former president of the Claremont College's chapter of the American Association of Universities Professionals and a member of the state coordinating committees of Jewish Voice for Peace in Indiana, penned a blog post for a pay, a, a, AAUP's blog making a case for divestment it was published and then swiftly removed on July 19th. Oh, okay. A vote of the AAUP Executive Council later reversed that decision and restored the post. Yeah. Efforts from pro Zionist voices to smear the resolution were also launched last week. The US AFT published a book of proposed resolutions. Publications, including the Ju Jerusalem Post and the New New York Post, were quick to lob accusations of anti Semitism at organizers and union leadership. Around the same time, executive council members began receiving thousands of intimidating emails demanding that they condemn the resolutions. Siegel told Truth out that these campaigns perpetuate a dangerous conflation equating anti Zionism with anti Zionism. It's not anti Jewish to say that there should not be a state in which you have 12 million people living under the rule of the state. And all of those who are Palestinian have less rights or no rights, no citizenship as compared to the Jewish citizen, he said. While this year's proposed divestment resolutions were quashed in committee, organizers remain committed to pursue their aims. They see the resolutions and this year's convention of a process. We view this very much as the beginning of a campaign and a kind, and a kind of first step in the political education that needs to happen within AFT on the issue of Israel-Palestine. Matthew Miller, a member of the University of Maryland Chapter AAUP and Local 6741, told Truthout. Mm. 
While the convention closes on July 25th, organizers will return to local and state level struggles. We're not going away. We're going to come back and keep coming back till we get sense. As educators, as K-12 teachers, as healthcare workers, as professors, we need to be at the forefront of this fight for justice in the house. Yep. Some of you are. You know? Well, um, trying to. But, um, so, um, I'm not sure, well, it's, com I don't want to say it's complicated, but in a sense, in this case, it kind of is. Yeah. Um, in terms of, you know, there's obvious financial interest within the AFT regarding Israel. I think I'm not necessarily a fan of resolutions, but in this case, I can understand why they thought it was necessary to do yeah, this. No, they need they need their opinion officially on the books, essentially. Right. You know. But yeah. So again, it's just kind of showing, you know, you know, again, as we keep saying, the union leadership does not always the opinions of the leadership does not always uh it's not always the sentiment of the file members. Well, and you, you see this especially among colleges, you see it among, you know, there's definitely been we talked about it here on this channel, how there's entire groups of you know israeli supporters who their job is to engage our educational system right oh so, i i am just wondering and like and people in the chat can talk about this like what's next where well, do we go from here in terms I of i sent you this uh today right you know where you right. ucsc is right Mm -hmm. Um, so this is what they're putting in orientation for incoming students, right? So which actions constitute protected free speech? A, organizing a rally in Quarry Plaza, a public university space, protesters blocking access to campus, a student sit-in of the chancellor's office, a group of protesters disrupting a class that is in session. I'm going to go with all of the above. All Myself personally, I'm betting they don't feel the same way. Right. Um, What's their answer? Oh, did they? I give? I don't think they gave one. So, what speech is protected? Joining a class online and repeatedly making comments that disrupt the professor from teaching, posting flyers or posters in a non-public space without university authorization, posting flyers or advertisements in approved university public posting spaces. Blocking access to a building or the university in general while engaging in otherwise protected activities such as picketing or demonstrating. So, Wait, go back to the first one. Yeah. What speech is protected? Joining a class online and maybe making set to that is kind of bullshit just with uh -huh. the phrasing. Yeah, it's all phrased poorly. Poorly. You know? Um because it's almost kind of implying, it's almost kind of protecting, showing the idea a student cannot question a professor in terms of what they're saying or cannot critique right. what a professor is saying at all. Well, and they'll probably so, put that on the onus of the professor's, you know, decision, where it's like, if they feel it's disrupting their teaching, right. then you will be reprimanded. So, right. which depending on the teacher, that could be a problem when you should have the right to, but right. you know, they're just trying to claim like, don't, don't harass people. But it's also like the big ones is like, don't block access to the campus. That's their, what they're worried about. That, that was twice. Right. You know, like, uh, don't disrupt classes that are in session. They're worried about that too. Right. So this is what hurts their bottom line. So they don't right. want you to do those things. They are saying that's not protected free speech, even though the fuck it is. It definitely <laughs> is. It is. You right. you have the right to do so. So, you know, but police, I'm sure, will escort you off the premises either way. So, you know. Or at uh, worst, expel you for... Yeah. 
you know. So, How much yeah. do you think so I, campus police costs have went up recently? You know, I definitely bet you they they've paid a bit more to that fund than they normally do. I'm sure. But but yeah, but going back to the article, my thing is. I mean, we've seen teachers strike before in terms of wages. Yeah. Like, I'm just wondering if there's going to be enough um, enough of a groundswell for teachers, depending on the state, to do something similar in terms of... Um, and I feel that, and this is me kind of being cynical, more than likely not even for me you know who's in my union right now talk to you know my own union member within my ward regarding having a rally on friday when i'm kind of like first of all it's labor day weekend so i don't expect my teachers to come up show up after school for a quote unquote rally um when this is the first week of school and many of my colleagues are sick, number one. But then number two, and I said this to them, and, and I kind of talked to you about this, you know, privately, and, you know, first of all, it's not even, they say they do say it's a protest, but really it's like, no, it's not. It's yeah. like, it's not disrupting anything. You're it's doing performative. it before after school. Yeah. It's just a performative means to show that, we don't have a contract. I'm not saying that they don't have their place, but we've done this before. It hasn't really been effective, so we need to try something else. And what I suggested was, I think I said this to you too, I suggested, like, our families are very powerful. You need to get the families that you know and begin to make calls. Because, like, our mayor doesn't particularly like, not to say she doesn't like them, but my Bouncer? families and my ward are extremely well connected. One phone call or enough phone calls to her office or whoever or the media will make all the difference in the world. And right. so like you imagine know, putting that so, you you have like orientation every year for parents and whatever. You gotta give them eight pages of stuff. You know, you put one of those with a QR code and a phone number, you know, where it's like mm-hmm. Hey, also, as long with all the, you know, pencils and papers you're going to get, if you get tired of having to pay that kind of stuff for us, you know, here's our list of demands. Feel free to bring them up to the mayor, you know, like very easy, in my opinion, to at least get how many calls would you get? Like, What's that? I, you know, I bet you'd get at least 20, 20 percent of people you send that to, to to do something. Yeah, no. and I think for me, and what I said to this group the other night was, like, families generally care about their teeth. Yeah, use the uh, power of the Karen. Right. Stick those yes. Karens on the like, mayor, bro. Right, like, and it's like, they, like, and often it's like, parents ask, what, what can we do? What can we do to help? And basically, at this point, I'm like, look, we don't have a contract. Right. And especially for my parents who work in the private sector, the idea of not having a pay increase every year, like if they don't have it, they will speak up about it. So the idea that for teachers, the, the people who are educating their kids don't have that, you know, should be like a ploy for them to do something or have the idea of doing it. And it could be very minimal, as you said, of writing yeah. a letter or making the right phone calls to the right people. Yeah. So I feel like I just don't know. And again, I see this kind of solidarity generally when it comes for teachers, when it comes to wages. I don't know for Palestine. I hope there would be some kind of connections there. However, given the nature of the topic of Palestine, I don't think it would be as supported, I would say. Right. Um, with certain families and certain communities in particular. 
Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see what kind of amounts from the mission after now. Um, now that's like it happened a month ago, and see. <sighs> I mean, I'm kind of torn. I get the idea of resolutions, but they in themselves are just kindly worded letters. Yeah. Like, they don't mean anything. It's just like the idea of, like, this is the thing I support or not support. Okay, well, if your union is not necessarily for against it, what steps are you going to take to escalate the situation in your favor? Yeah. And I'm not sure. And I don't know. I can't necessarily think of what would be the next step in this case. Um, but there's enough of teachers in that union that I'm sure will be able to get out. I just don't want them to necessarily take the easy route of just being like a rally or something like that. Like, oh, again, it could be effective, but I want it to hurt the leadership and especially yeah. uh, the funding that that union has in ties to Israel. So we'll see what happens, but somewhat of a, I wouldn't say feel good story, but it's not like something different, you know, something a little different. Oh, well, you know, speaking of funding, you can go to kodashv.com slash indie news network. Give us some of your funding if you are so inclined by scanning that QR code on your screen with your camera app from your phone. You know, or if you're in the live chat, you can exclamation mark donate and get the little link to help us out. You know, we're we're, we're getting our goal together. It's going up, you know, trying to get some illustrations and awards together. So be on the lookout for those. Um, but, you know, if you can't give monetarily, we always appreciate just engaging with the channel, liking and subscribing, hitting the share button, you know, we're heavily suppressed. So getting us to like-minded friends is always appreciative and letting us know what you think, get in that comment section, you know, give your, give your opinions, but otherwise thanks for watching.